Hello and welcome back to another episode of The Doug Geyser Show, brought to you by the Ashland University Journalism and Digital Media Department. I'm Kate Krakis, and as usual, I'm joined by the head coach of the Eagle football team, Doug Geyser. Coach, thanks for sitting down with me here today. I appreciate it. Thank you, Cade. This past weekend, your team returned home to take on the Walsh Cavaliers, downing them 21-7 to in dominating fashion. So let's open things up with your thoughts after the contest. Uh, I thought the defense was uh, nails as always. They did a great job of limiting big plays, um, really consistent with tackles, and it's kind of playing the next play. So they're, they have a chance to be very, very explosive in the future with their quarterback. He's very, very mobile. So that was a good place to start. Uh, special teams with rock solid as always, uh, especially our scan punt unit this week, down on the ball inside the five three times. And, uh, and the offense uh, started to uh, get a little more consistency as the game wore on. And coming off that win against the Panthers last week, it's your first multi-game win streak of the season. How mm -hmm. important is to find that mid-season now? It's, it's important to stack games, you know, especially if you want to you know, get a chance to you know, compete for the league crown. I mean, we're behind Tiffin at this point, and uh, we got to hope somebody maybe knocks them off. But in the meantime, we got to take care of business, you know. So, hey, it's one game at a time. we got to start stacking those Ws. And taking a look at this past game, starting things off on the offensive side of things, Trevor Bozinski, three touchdowns through the air. Talk a little mm -hmm. about his performance and how he's really come into fruition this season. He's starting to really take ownership of the offense and being very, very uh, – uh, just kind of taking charge more than anything else. And it's, it's nice to have that voice. We've had it for six years with Austin and, uh, and encouraging Trevor to do it. And he's starting, to, he's starting to take that to a four. Yeah. And so outside of the scoring drives you guys had this past weekend, there were some times where there was three and outs very quick, quickly, and you guys were coming on and off the field, offense and defense. So how do you avoid those excessive amount of those? Uh, we, we shot ourselves in the foot with a lot of penalties that aren't us, procedural penalties. And, uh, you know, we got we to gotta eliminate those. That's not really us. Hasn't been us the whole season, so it kind of cropped up. That and a combination of drop passes. I think we had five or six drop passes, and those are drive killers, as you know. And so you take a look at the people who caught receiving touchdowns this week. It wasn't the usual Desmond Libertas. It was actually mm -hmm. three other individuals, Jet Joseph, Jake McLaughlin, and Tony Pannunzio. Mm -hmm. So how important is it to, for you to have a deep wide receiver room like that? It, it is extremely important because you can take away one guy if you'd like to. But if you have four or five guys that are weapons, you can scheme to take away Desmond a little, a little bit or take away his yards after catch. But if you do that, you're going to open up someone else. And Trevor did a good job going through his reads and not forcing it into Desmond, taking what was there, and, and that really helped him. And then defensively as well, I feel like every week we're talking about a similar player. But this week, <laughs> you guys had a new one who got involved in the turnover battle, and that's Anthony Harkness. So, I mean, he came out of practically nowhere this week. How important was it for him to get that interception, ultimately shift momentum back for you guys? It, it was huge. It was huge. They were, they were starting to get a little consistency going. And, uh, you know, uh, Anthony uh, made, you know, stepped in front of a pass, did a great job getting his feet down. Uh, when I saw him catch it, I didn't quite know if he had his feet down, but watching the, the, the scoreboard afterwards, I could confirm it. And uh, that was huge for us at that point in the game. And through the past two games, the defense have given up just 13 points, mm -hmm. six against the Panthers and then seven against the Cavaliers. So how important is it to have that defense stand out week in and week out? Especially important, especially as we go into the Northwood game this next week. They're very high-powered on offense. And so it's going to take a really good effort for us to uh, be able to hold them down a little bit. And outside of the players we've mentioned, are there any standouts that you noticed after the contest? Oh, let's see. I would think more than anything else, we mentioned Tony Panunzio. Tony did a great job. He had three tackles on the kickoff team. Uh, he had the last touchdown, which kind of, you know, salted the game away. And so he's been showing up every single week, even if it's not at receiver, he's on every single special team. And uh, he really takes pride in that craft. And he's kind of been an uns unsung hero for us this, this year. And then this coming weekend, you guys are headed to Northwood. So how are you guys feeling headed back onto the road? Well, it's going to test our maturity. We've been on the road a handful of times already. And, uh, hey, it's the next game up. It's, an, it's the only game we play this week. You know, it deserves our full attention. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a worthy opponent, that's for sure. And lastly, you guys are now 3-3 three and three on the season, mm -hmm. they're sitting directly at 500. How important is that to overall locker room confidence? It's huge. You, see start, you start, uh, you know, 0-2. And you worry a little bit, but our, our seniors and our lettermen, our returners, our captains have done a great job of keeping the team together and uh, persevering and turning the page after every single week. And, uh, you know, we're starting to see the, fru the fruits of that labor. Well, Coach, I appreciate your time here today. Appreciate it. Thank you. Shortly, we'll be sitting down with wide receiver and special team standout Tony Panunzio. He'll jo be joining us to discuss his play this past weekend against the Cavaliers, what it's like to be a walk-on turned game changer, and much more. Stay tuned. You're watching The Doug Geyser Show on AUTV.
welcome back to the Doug Geyser Show. Now I'm joined by walk-on wide receiver Tony Pannunzio. First off, thanks for joining me here today. Thanks, Cade. Obviously, we've got to talk about your play this past weekend against the Cavaliers and the 27-yard touchdown you were able to find. But before that, we've got to talk about your journey to getting onto this football team. So first off, how did you even end up coming to Ashland University? Yeah, so um, when I was in high school, I didn't really get a lot of looks out of, out of school. I had an injury my senior year. So um, coming into college, I originally got in touch with Coach Stacy. And after visiting the program, uh, I loved what I saw. They had the academics for me. They had the football program, the facilities. It was all perfect. So um, that really swayed my views uh, towards coming here. And so then obviously Coach Geyser told us earlier this season that you are able to get yourself a, a scholarship. So how did that all come about? Yeah, so that was actually um, the beginning of summer or the middle of summer. Um, and it, it, I used it as a motivation for me coming or before that. Um, pushing towards uh, getting a role on the team and finding a spot for myself to fit in. That's what I really looked forward. Um, and that got me through uh, the tough nitty gritty spots and uh, just working out in the off season. And up until that scholarship, that kind of, I used that as a reward. And it, it, I was very grateful for that, um, having that to kind of ease, ease in and do everything. And uh, yeah, so. So how important for you was it to get on scholarship and then eventually end up becoming a regular starter on this offense? Yeah, so kind of like the last question, it was a sign of like reassurance, uh, reassurance that the that the coaches and everybody on the team they kind of um, they kind of needed me, and I needed to fill a role on the team, and I was grateful for that opportunity uh, to come. And even today, when I find myself down or trying to handle some adversity, I kind of think back to that scholarship and what I'm here for and what everybody else needs for me, and it kind of just gets me back into that setting. So. And so outside of offensively, I mean, you've really made a name for yourself on the special team side of things, being a standout in that regard. So what is it like to be involved with the special teams unit? Yeah, it's great. I kind of see the special teams, uh, that whole third side of the ball, as the most underrated or the overlooked part of football. Um, it's that one possession drive where it can make or break a team, uh, just shifting momentum every so way uh, towards one team or the other, um, no matter what the score is. So um, for me personally, going out there, I try to go out there with the mentality of 110% effort, uh, doing everything at, at that full speed, um, and try to spark something for whoever comes next, the offense or defense. And then during your time here at Ashland, who have been some coaches or players that have helped you really get to where you are now? Yeah, so um, definitely the position group. Uh, we're really close, all the wideouts and all that. And even the, uh, the quarterbacks, uh, Trevor, uh, Cam, Trent, all of them, they help me. Um, they keep me in check, uh, hold each other accountable. That's what we do. Um, even the coaches, Coach Burberry, um, Coach Stacy, uh, they keep us in check. And even the fine, finest detail, they, they try to correct us. And they let us know if we make a mistake. So um, for them to look over our shoulder like that, it's, it's great. And I think that they are to blame uh, for some of our success here. And so now back to the task at hand. You guys were able to take down the Cavaliers this past weekend. What's the locker room feeling like? It's good. Uh, it's good to go a little 2-0 run, which is awesome, going into this next big game. We definitely did make some mistakes, um, some drop passes from the wideouts, um, some penalties, uh, missed assignments. But I'm pretty confident that this week's practice will uh, we'll, we'll, we'll make some adjustments. And going into this, this next game, we'll get them all fixed up. So. And the offense is starting to finally roll. So what has the workload been like for you guys to finally get to this point where week in and week out you're starting to roll? Um, it's great. Um, I kind of feel like those, especially looking at it from a receiver standpoint where I'm around uh, mostly, uh, we're kind of finding our groove. We're getting closer and closer, and we're trusting each other each week and we each, each week in, in and out. So for that trust and for the quarterbacks to build on that trust, it's huge. And so lastly, you guys going up against Northwood this weekend. How does it feel going back on the road after being at home this week? It's good. Um, kind of need that little business trip. That's the way I think of it, uh, that mentality of a business trip going up there. They're definitely going to have the momentum early uh, from the start with that crowd. They're the the team to beat right now for us in the conference, uh, they're probably right behind Tiffin, I'd say. And we just have to, after this week's practice, like I said, making those adjustments, that'll be big. And we'll have to play uh, Ashland football from both, uh, all three sides of the ball uh, for us to come out with that win. Well, thanks, Tony, for sitting down with me today. Thank you for having me. Of course. When we return, we'll check in with Coach Donzel Ashley. Coach Ashley will join us to talk about his time as an AU alum, what it was like to formally play for this team, and discuss his new role as the defensive back coach for the team. You're watching the Doug Geyser Show on AU TV.
welcome back to the Doug Geyser Show. Now I'm joined alongside Coach Ashley. Coach, this past weekend, the defensive backs seem to have produced their best outing of the season. How are you feeling about the performance? Uh, I'm, feeling, I'm feeling really confident with the guys. Uh, I challenged the guys these last two weeks to really uh, step up to the plate, um, you know, and they, and they responded well. Uh, we want to continue this momentum and keep it going. And so you talked about continuing the momentum. How can you guys do that next this coming week? Um, what we've been doing lately in practice is just really competing, competing at a high level, uh, especially against our offense. Um, the goal is always to make the offense a little mad, <laughs> but it's just it's just our way of competing. So taking a look, so so far this season, each week new defensive backs have emerged with some interceptions and standing out. So who for you has stood out the most this year? Um, so far, uh, Prude, uh, Devin Prude has stepped up. Um, with him being one of the key guys for us last year and me coming in and, and getting to know the guys, uh, he was one that stepped out, in, uh, stepped up instantly and, and showed me um, he's very capable of being a, a, a strong leader for us in the back end. And so now throwing it back a little bit into history, you used to be a starting defensive back for the Eagles, so what was it like during your time with the team? Uh, it was great, you know, being a, a kid from California, coming all the way to Ashland, Ohio, um, my expectations was... Uh, um, very high of the program, uh, especially with the academics and the football side of it. And so um, I had a great time. And I, I thank uh, Coach Geyser and all the, the guys on the staff for uh, helping me along that way. So what ultimately brought you back to AU? Um, just the, the culture, the culture, the family-oriented uh, culture that we have always had. Um, you know, this was a big opportunity for me to come back and just work and, and gain as much knowledge as I possibly can from coaches that coach me up. So... And although this position is fairly new to you, joining just before that Hillsdale competition, what are some of your aspirations for the position you're in now? Um, you know, I, I, my aspirations are just to, um, you know, push myself mentally to get to that next level. But also, I just want to take in as much knowledge as I possibly can from the coaches and learn from them. That's the big goal right now. And so what are the keys to success this coming week against Northwood? Um, just uh, plan our game, you know. Um, we know we have a, a big task uh, at hand going on the road, uh, but we still feel confident in ourselves to get the job done. Uh, we just got to stay focused. Well, Coach, I appreciate you sitting down with me here today. Thank you. Now it's time to wrap up the show with Coach Geyser as we take a look at the current season standings and the rest of the schedule. Coach will join us after these brief messages. You're watching The Doug Geyser Show on AUTV. Welcome back to the Doug Geyser Show, right here on AUTV. Coach, it's been great to talk with you and your team here today, but before we go, let's take a look at the current standings and what we can expect from the team in the coming weeks. So, first off, you, how are you feeling that now you and your team are through four games of conference play with three wins and one loss? Well, we're you know, making our way back up the, uh, up the uh, standings there, which was good. You know, we started with stubbed our toe a little bit early. Um, Tiffin's still the team to beat, and uh, they've been uh, pretty high-powered offensively and defensively all the way through. We saw this past week, Northwood, our team we're playing this week is, you know, knocked off Finley. And that was a big win for them. That was Finley's first loss in the conference. So, uh, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a meat grinder of a league right now. And Coach, now heading on to the road this coming week against Northwood. After that, you'll be back at home for three straight games. So, how are you feeling about that long stand at Jack Miller Stadium? Well, we got to get the first one here for, uh, this week. Uh, this is the third quarter of the season for us right now. And, uh, you know, those games were Walsh and they were Northwood and both unique challenges. So um, it'll be nice, you know, after this week. But right now, all I'm worried about is going to Midland and getting a, getting a win against Northwood. Well, Coach, I greatly appreciate your time here today. But before we go, any final thoughts for the audience out there? Uh, well, hey, we, we really want to thank the, uh, the crowd for showing up at Walsh. Um, that crowd at Jack Miller Stadium always spurs us on and becomes that proverbial 12th man. And so I'm um, going to give them continued thanks, you know, for their support throughout the season. Well, thank you, Coach. Thank you. That was today's episode of the Doug Geyser Show. With the Eagles taking down the Walsh Cavaliers at home 21-7, they next look to go up against the Northwood Timberwolves this coming weekend with hopes of building upon their two-game win streak heading into the final stretch of the regular season. 
The outing is set for Saturday, October 14th, with kickoff set for 1 p.m. on the road on the campus of Northwood University. The game can be found by heading over to GoAshlandEagles.com and checking out the links alongside the contest on the football schedule tab. I'm Cade Krakus, and thank you for tuning into the Doug Geyser Show right here on AUTV.